Welcome to Come Home. I'm Jen Mallon. You know, everybody should believe in something. And I believe that I'm going to have another cup of coffee. So you get yours and join me today. Today's program is for kingdom entrepreneurs, for dreamers, for wealth builders, for those that have gotten a revelation that God is using the marketplace ministry for his purposes. My guest today is Michael McIntyre, and he has built an incredible empire, and he teaches, and he coaches, and he encourages, he sees greatness in others, and his message is, look, God has blessed you to be a blessing. Many times we don't like to talk about the wealth of the wicked being laid up for the righteous. We don't like to talk about sometimes uh, leaving an inheritance to our children and our children's children as Proverbs states, because we have a fear that maybe we'll be labeled or it'll get off in prosperity gospel, but not Michael McIntyre. He goes there, he teaches us, he encourages us, and he calls us up higher. So make sure you have someone tune in and join us today. Also, we are going to go get a quick bite to eat before we jump into this interview. And Stephanie has cooked up pasta and mushroom and kale. She's so healthy. Let's go to the Homekeeper's Kitchen. Welcome to the kitchen, the heart of the home. I'm so happy to be with you today. We have a really yummy recipe today. It is pasta and mushroom kale. And I am, okay, I don't know if I'm excited about kale, but we'll see. I don't know if I've ever actually eaten kale before. So I'm trying to step outside of the box with all of my recipes and I'm trying to help you bring you along with me. So I'm gonna get this going and then I'm gonna show you a picture. So I have garlic, which I'm gonna turn the heat down. I don't wanna burn. I'm gonna put the mushrooms in first. I have mushrooms, eight ounces of mushrooms. And the recipe doesn't call for separate pans for this, but I wanna get these mushrooms a little bit um, cooked and caramelized before I, add them to the recipe. And if I put everything in the pan at once, I don't have enough time to do that. So I'm gonna do that. I've got kale I'm gonna put in the other pan. And we'll just see how that goes. Big old bag of kale. Oh, hey now, there you go, it's a hot pan. <laughs> there we go. I'm gonna get that cooking. I'm gonna put a little crushed red pepper in with the mushrooms and some garlic thyme and salt. There we go. Spinach and kale really uh, shrink down. So it looks like a lot and it's not. Let me turn this down a little bit. Let me put my seasonings in. I got garlic, which it called for two. Um, yeah, my brain just shut down. Cloves. I put four. I always put extra garlic. I have crushed red pepper that Arthleen Rippey never let me use, so now I can. I have some thyme, some dry thyme, and I have some salt. I'm gonna get that cooking. And while this is all cooking down, I'm gonna show you a picture. This is a picture of my most recent Christmas deliveries. And while we're taping this, it's July. But I made the mistake of getting on a Facebook page that um, people share Clarence all their clearance Christmas items that they found. So I got all this stuff minus the wreaths because the wreaths I bought from a, a local friend. I'm a big proponent of small business. So if you um, have small businesses that you use, use them for Christmas. That helps them pay their bills and helps them, you're not paying for some big conglomerate president to have another Lamborghini or whatever. You're helping a family. So I'm a big proponent a small business. I'm doing most of my Christmas shopping this year from small businesses. Now, the Christmas decorations you're seeing here are from Walmart, but I got them on clearance. So most of them were 75% off. So yes, July, I'm already planning. Can't help myself. It's gonna be a good one this year. Okay, kale cooking, mushroom, garlic, red pepper, thyme. Now, I have pasta here, and again, I'm stepping out of the box. I did chickpea pasta this time because it's full of protein, it's full of fiber, and we're gonna try it. it the texture is a little bit different, but it tastes really good. So let's do this. Let me get rid of my bowls here. 
I have a little bit of the pasta water that I kept. See how yummy those mushrooms are looking? If I put those in with the kale, they wouldn't have caramelized like that. Get this kale cooked down a little bit. We'll have some naughty recipes coming up. It's all about balance. Right now, I'm just trying to be healthy. I went up and had some of my dad's spaghetti while I was on vacation, so I had to come back and be good. Okay. So, the kale is reducing nicely. The mushrooms. Mm. And the garlic smells really, really good. I always add more. Don't, don't worry about going heavy on seasonings because that's where you want to add as much flavor as you can. So I'm going to add the mushrooms to the kale. And again, you could do this at all in one pot. I didn't have time to caramelize the mushrooms like I did uh, wood. Got that going. I'm going to add some of the chickpea pasta. I'll add, oh, that's good. I'm going to add a little bit of the pasta water. My, my pan is nice and hot. Can you hear it? That's a beautiful sound. And I'm just going to get this mixed up. And the flavor is all coming from the vegetables and from the garlic. I mean, you could add so many other seasonings to this if you wanted to. Whatever you like. Garlic would be good, regular garlic. Okay. Let's put this on a pan. Let me reach for my plate, I mean. And then I'm going to put some Parmesan cheese on it. I get this off the fire so it doesn't burn. This is beautiful. Look at that. Some Parmesan. And let's take a little taste. Mm. That's good. Let's try the kale and the pasta. Mm. That tastes so fresh. I would add a, probably a little more garlic salt or, and salt and pepper. But other than that, it's great. So you can get this recipe so many times, so many different ways. Thank you so much. God bless you, and I'll see you next time. interesting and I enjoyed it. I'm usually not a kale lover, but with the pasta and the mushrooms, it was yummy. So thank you so much, Stephanie. Well, today I'm so excited because I love talking about things Jesus talked about. And Jesus talked about wealth and he talked about money and he talked about treasure and he talked about gems. And so uh, I'm I have a guest today that is an expert in all of these things at the top of his game, experiencing incredible success. And it's because I believe that he puts Jesus first. He puts the Holy Spirit first in all that he does. And so welcome, Michael McIntyre. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Thanks Jen. Thanks so much. So honored to be here. Thank you. So you um, have a beautiful wife, Stacy, yes. and three daughters. Yes. You live in an all-girl world. <laughs> I live in an all-boy world. Yes. And so you have an, your, your family's in ministry with you and serving with you. Yeah. Uh, I love your mission statement for McIntyre Coaching. It's to awaken identity, identity, activate purpose, and accelerate mission. Yeah. That's like, let's go. I'm ready. Let's go. Um, so right. exciting. But, you know, we have a mutual friend, Sandy. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And uh, when I was talking to her and she was telling me about your incredible conferences, she said, uh, she said he's so affirming and he calls out greatness and he just, he's a visionary and he just sees a masterpiece in everyone he meets. And I'm like, who is he? <laughs> I, I, so I just love that you are positive and that's, that's how God is. Amen. Yeah. Um, okay. So tell um, my viewers about your testimony, your story. You oh, were yeah. wealthy. You, you didn't need God. You were successful and, you know, 
Jesus talks about, you know, for someone that wealthy to get saved is like going through the eye of the needle. Yeah, yeah. like a camel. camel. Yeah. 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 So tell us, tell us about your testimony. All right. Well, thank you. And uh, it's kind of interesting. I, I, I always quip that, you know, on the road to Damascus, I was knocked off my Bentley. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was a radical shift for me. And I ran for Jesus from Jesus all my life. Uh, it's not that I was an evildoer or anything. I just didn't believe Jesus was God. I didn't believe that there was a holy person out there, a holy being out there. I, do, I did believe that, you know, this just didn't all happenstance. But I did run from Jesus for a long time. And uh, one day in, in my book, I discuss it, I, it. My daughter, my oldest daughter, got really sick. And so uh, I knew my, my mother had always taught me to thank God in all circumstances. She was kind of new agey, but she was still, they, they take a little bit from everywhere, yeah. as you know. And so uh, I thank God that we got her home okay and she was okay from the hospital. And that night I had a huge dream. And in the dream, uh, a big, huge voice spoke to me in a language I didn't not understand or know. So I woke up the next day and I told my wife, Stacy, I said, what does this mean? She goes, go talk to your brother, Matthew, because my brother's uh, a devout Christian. And so I went and had coffee with him. And uh, I remember the day before I, thanking God that my daughter was safe and yeah. okay. And so the next day when I told my brother what the language was, he said, that meant you're welcome. <gasps> He knew? He knew. Wow. And what's interesting is he's been praying for me, and we had a, there was a chain going for like eight years of me coming to Jesus and giving my life to Jesus. So wow. He would, and it was really cool because he got to be testimony. He was front lines and seeing all this, and God blessed him with that experience. And so, uh, yeah, so my, li my life radically changed at that point because uh, I was very successful in business. I served four years in the United States Air Force, got out and got into insurance business and did really well, grew to a $3 billion company. Wow. Uh, and then Jesus came and I finally surrendered my life <laughs> and gave it to Jesus. You, so your brother was praying for you, yeah. your wife Stacy was praying yes. for you, yes. and a whole chain. And you made them pray for eight years, huh? I did, yeah. I did, uh, yeah. <laughs> Forgive me, Lord, yeah. And, uh, but yeah, they did, they were faithful. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. I want her to come on, because I, I know I was reading about the coaching that she does, just emotional healing yes. and emotional well-being. And yeah, so. Stacy's amazing. Can you put in a good word for me? Yes, okay, yes. Thank you. <laughs> in fact, I already texted her and said, they wanted you here. <laughs> yes. Well, okay. So let's let's talk about these conferences you're, you're yes. having because I know that they're so important, especially for quit Christian wealth builders. Mm -hmm. Because many times you're a believer and you want the principles from the Word. You don't necessarily want to go to a secular conference because right. you know that you're going to have to kind of, you know, take the meat and, and throw away the bone. So God has told you, you mm -hmm. know, to do these two conferences. Can you tell us a little bit about them in case anybody says, I've got to go, I've got to be there? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So uh, we developed, uh, we when I had my insurance business, we had developed a, a really a, an experiential training system. I didn't have Jesus in it at all. And it was very successful though. I had, we, we recruited and trained over 20,000 salespeople in our, in our company. Uh, so when I gave my life to Jesus, I had a radical shift. I, I felt with the Holy Spirit it was awesome uh, and he said okay here's I want you to use this but I want you to add the Holy Spirit to it Wow! and so that's what we did and our first dealings with that was with the upper room in Dallas which I was with long story but I ended up being on staff there which that was a real knee slapper in heaven I promise you that <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we did this and uh, so we did this tra uh, experiential learning it's kind of like when you learn how to ride a bike, right? Yeah. You have to get on the bike and learn how to ride it. You just don't read, you can't YouTube and figure it out. You've right. got to do it. So we do these conferences and there's three days. They're intense. They're not for snowflakes. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's game on. It's Holy Spirit filled. Hardcore. Hardcore. And, but what's cool about it is that we have a curriculum, but the Holy Spirit always brings his curriculum. He interrupts. He does. And, and you and, let him. And I, oh yeah. Oh yeah. We <laughs> surrender to that. And, uh, but it's life changing. It's, it's something for people to really that want to take their life to the next level. It's not a hospital. It's yeah. for people whose lives are working. Yeah. Uh, and they can, whether they're business, housewife, husband, uh, house husbands, whatever it is, and teachers, we have people from 18 to 72 to come through. That's awesome. And there's no money up front. 
at the end, if they want to bless us, they can. Uh, but we, we, the enemy told us, you know, charge money. And then God says, no, take that out. Okay. Wow. Uh, we don't want that. And uh, we want their commitment. So we took that out and it's been going great. So it's, uh, it's in Dallas. It's three days. It's intense. But it's life changing. It's transformational training. And then we have, then we started the uh, McIntyre Business Accelerator, MBA, and that's for people who are actually in business, who are entrepreneurs. Uh, we help people increase their revenue from anywhere from twenty five percent to one hundred and eighty percent. Wow! Uh, God's blessed me with the ability to create wealth, and in Stacy and I, my wife and I, we've created over one hundred and seventy five multi millionaires, uh, and there's actually some of them that still have their money. <laughs> okay, so. That, you just went over that so fast. So yes. let's just back up. You <laughs> and your wife have created... 175 multimillionaires. Wow. Yeah, over the last what, 26 years, yes. Wow. Yeah. I don't know any human on the earth that can say that. Oh, to I God think, be the glory. The, well, thank you thank you for that. But it was... it. It's. I didn't know. It's like my friend Sean Bowles. You know Sean, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay, he endorsed my book, Very Generous. He, I remember I was on, on one of his shows, and he, I said, uh, how do I know God's doing this stuff? How do I know I'm hearing God in this business? He goes, McIntyre, it's real simple. He says, think of all the things that you created, all the wealth that you created. He goes, you are listening to God because you're not that good. <laughs> Well, thanks, Sean. <laughs> that's right. Thanks, Sean. Right? And, and so I, I said, okay, that's true because I could see things in business. I could see it playing out like I was watching a movie. And so I would bring this out and I'd say, here's how it, and, and you know, some people call it visionary. And what I didn't know, it was directly from the Holy Spirit. That's right. It's kind of like an algorithm. My friend Chris Valentin talks about it all the time. There's an algorithm of God going all the time. And all we have to do is reach up and grab it. But so many times in the Christian community, people say, no, I don't need to make money. I don't need to do this. I need, to, which is not true. Yeah. You know, I often say, I was telling your staff earlier that the good Samaritan would not have been famous if it weren't for money. Yeah. Right. That's and right. And a lot of people in our tribe want to give more and help more and do more missions and create things, but it takes money to that's do that. Right. So that's right. That's right. That's what. In a McIntyre Business Accelerator, it's three days. We only limit it to twenty people. Okay. Uh, it's coming up here in August, and so you you come in and uh, we invite you into our home, and uh, we have a uh, three days. And I what I do is I open up my billionaire Rolodex, so to speak, to where people can get uh, an audience with some people that they might not have been able to get with. Because I remember when I was just starting out, and it was a struggle to get where I had to go, yeah. and there was a few people that came and said, okay, I'll introduce you to this situation, to this person, which gave me a leg up in that situation. Yeah. So that's what we want to do. That's so awesome that you do that. That's, you know, Jesus was all about discipling, giving back, helping others, lifting up the hungry, yes, not you know, not those that are just coming for the fishes and the loaves, and then going home right. and never coming back. But but those who want to be discipled, yes. Let's just take a little sneak peek yeah. at what they might get, and and you in action. Can we do that? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Here at McIntyre, we have two amazing programs. Both are Holy Spirit filled, kingdom minded. The first is Next Level Experience. It's designed to create a safe place of transparency, authenticity, and designed for people whose lives are working, but know deep inside they want to take their life to the next level. No cost to you. At the end, if you want to bless us, that's awesome. We also have an exclusive McIntyre Business Accelerator, and this is for entrepreneurs and business owners who want to increase their revenue with a kingdom mindset. I've created billions of dollars in revenue in business. It's intense. It's awesome. I open up my Rolodex to show you some great people that can help you with legal, accounting, marketing, and social media. So come on in. And there's no plan small in his kingdom. If you're a small player, then you're going to reap small rewards. If you want big results, then you've got to take big risks. Stop playing a small game. Well, sign me up. I want to go. And I have 19 friends. So can we just have the whole conference? <laughs> yeah. can we, that I love seeing you Thank in you. action, that you're, you're gifted. That, Thank you. you know, and Thank that's you, from the Lord. That's yes. from the Lord. Amen. Okay, let's talk about how you were a successful person. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you become a successful believer? Oh, so good. So good. You know, I got to say, uh, my wife, 
And uh, Stacy has always been a believer, and she's always been praying for me to come and to give my life to the Lord. Uh, and I and I always did. I loved going to church, even though I didn't believe that Jesus was God. You know, I I figured it was good. I have three daughters, and I wanted. I I believe that the Christian. The Christian way is the best way, yeah. you know, rather than the Wiccan way, right? Yeah, right. I wanted them to go to this, this, yeah. and so, uh, and so, once I gave my life to Jesus, I felt hard, you know. I had that that limitless kind of movie, you know, going. I could, you know, felt everything, and the Holy Spirit was like, it was like Disney on ice. It was beautiful, <laughs> and my first inclination was because I'm a salesperson, right? And I love sales and I love business. Well, I've got to bring everybody to Jesus. I got to get. How do I get out there? You know, do I need to buy a TV station? What do I need to do? To do? And so. Uh, I had some really good mentors that came and said, listen, you can be Ananias. You know, uh, I think it's Ephesians 2.22 2, that talks about, you know, so nobody can boast. So no one That's can right. boast that he handpicks us to be in his royal priesthood, right? Yeah. And so I, I thought, oh, okay, <laughs> that was a relief. And so with that, I had some really good mentors and I had some really good pastors that really I could relate to. And God put me into these places. And then I started out in a big mega church in Dallas. Then I went to a small Holy Spirit filled church, which rocked my world, yeah. which that changed everything. And I had some great mentors there. And that's where I became a st on staff. And they wanted me to be executive pastor, but I said, no, I'll be the CEO. <laughs> and I did, and they did it. And I, I didn't want it at first, but that helped me. And that pastor there, he mentored me to, to, to be uh, Christ-like in the process in what I'm doing. So. I just got the fever for that. See, what's so important about what you're saying, it's huge. First of all, I love that you just gave credit to your wife. You know, that's beautiful. And, and all the women out there praying for your husband, don't give up. Amen. Do not give up, okay? Acts 16, 31 is your promise. Uh, I love that you, who are a teacher to many, became a student and you stayed on that lifelong journey to be mentored and taught. I love that you didn't take the executive pastor position because you knew you were called to be a, a marketplace minister. And those are huge. Th those are huge uh, bones in, in being on a successful path. And I'm sure you cover that in your book, um, more so probably in, in the conferences. Let's talk about wealth building yeah. because it's something that many people just like, oh, I don't want to talk about money. Talk about kingdom wealth building. Yeah. It, it's, it's one of your biggest you know, things that you do. Yeah. Tell us how to take our money and consecrate it to the Lord. Yeah. And uh, I, first thing is, is tithing. You know, one of the things that I learned early on, and, and I, listen, you know, I'm not perfect in any way. Just first of all, right? I'm still learning, constantly learning. And one of the things I learned, you know, I, I give my life to Jesus. I'm all on fire for Jesus. In the first two years, I struggled with tithing. I did, because unless I got a great parking spot, right? Unless I, I just really liked the music, right? Or the pastor acknowledged me, you know? Then I'd write the check out during the service. I was like, and then Robert Morris changed my life, okay? Wow. And uh, uh, he wrote this book uh, about a blessed life. Mm -hmm. And I realized mammon had been chasing me. The mammon spirit had been chasing me, even in my Christianity. And so that changed my life. So, you know, first fruits. Yeah. The Bible says first fruits, right? And and so, you know, Stacy and I are big on first fruits. Then we want to give extravagantly, sacrificially. And and every the more I give, the more I receive. Micah says you can't and Micah, you know, you cannot give the Lord. You can. So uh, I come across small business owners all the time saying, man, I'm just kind of, I, I don't want to tithe yet. I said, well, that's the biggest mistake. There you go. Okay. You've got to tithe. You get to tithe. Yeah. Right. And so with that, and then the other thing is too, seek wisdom. Yeah. Right. So there's so many, you know, I've got wisdom. I was just coaching one of my clients the other day and I said, listen, we need to, in, in your business, you can buy a car and get tax deductible on this car. How do you know that, Mac? Because I've been doing this for a, a long, long time. time. Trial and error, right? And I've created wealth in this and you want to take advantage of the laws legally and you also want to be able to help other people. The one thing I teach my daughters is to focus out on somebody else, yeah. right? Jesus always focused out, right? It was never inward. So when you focus out, then things will have come back your way. That's like the, the algorithm. 
algorithm that's yeah. out there. And there's people out there that will get it. And if you, if, if you say yes, okay, and do it. And if you say no, it'll go to somebody else. That's right. And that's why we, in, in McIntyre, we want our Christian people to be the millionaires, the billionaires, whatever it is, or just have their debt paid off and have a couple hundred thousand dollars left over to do what they want to do. Um, but don't be afraid. Okay. Fear is not of him. That's right. Okay? And have uh, yet let your yes be yes, your no be no, and no ambiguity. I love it. We have a short time left. Yes. This went so fast, but I just want to set you free to minister to whoever's on your heart, to just encourage them and uh, to bless them and to call them into a next level life. That's awesome. Thank you, Jen. Uh, yeah. So, I'm going to talk to you out there, you business owner, you small business owner, uh, maybe an entrepreneur, maybe somebody that's just starting in business that has an idea. And maybe you shared your idea with somebody and they shot it down and it discouraged you. I just want you to know that that idea, if it came from the Holy Spirit, if you prayed over that idea, it's worthy. Okay, and I just want to encourage you, if you have that idea, to take it to somebody that you love and that you trust. You know, the Bible says, uh, do not cast uh, 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 your pearls amongst the swine. Make sure you know who you're dealing with. Here's the other thing, too. If you have wealth, if you have a lot of wealth, okay, and when I say a lot of net worth wealth, I'm talking about over a million dollars net worth wealth. Uh, and sometimes it gets lonely because people ask you a lot of things in your life, in church, if you're a Christian. And so I want you to know that it's okay to say no, all right? It's okay to have discernment, and it's okay to seek wisdom in there. And we, when we come into Next Level Experience, we don't look at your bank account. We don't look at anything that. All we look at is your heart. And just like Jesus says, love everybody always. And that's what we want to do. So I want to encourage you also, for those that are struggling financially, that there's more out there for you. And there's a way to get to that level, okay? through tithing, through sacrificial giving, and to focus out and don't look at just your checkbook or your balances of your account. Look higher. Stay focused on the prize, okay? Be around people. Be around other eagles. Look, if you're with somebody out there and they're bringing you down, find new friends, okay? Go. Stay positive. And Jen, I just want to thank you for allowing me to be on this show it's an amazing show that you have here and it's such a gift in the kingdom. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Michael. You helped us. Um, you know, Jesus cares about every area of our life. He cares about our wealth and our money. Um, he, he, he tells us that over and over. I encourage you guys, get this book. If you're interested in the conference, you can see how to get in touch with McIntyre Enterprises on the, you know, right at the bottom of the screen. You have so blessed us. I look forward to doing more shows together. And thank you for watching Come Home Today. Jesus loves you. He's with you. And he's doing supernatural things in your life. Be encouraged. 